Yo, what's poppin', man? It's your boy Ian, man. You tuned in to Straight Talk 901. All right, it's Straight Talk 901. Yo, what's poppin'? Episode number five. What it do? We in the door with Ian's, a radio personality. Gospel rapper, pastor, father, husband, super cool guy that I met. What's good with you, bro? Man, what's up, bro? I'm going to let you finish telling the people a little bit about yourself before we dive into this interview. Man, what's poppin', man? It's your boy, man, Pastor Dante, a.k.a. Hens. I believe, man, one of the premier Christian hip-hop artists coming out of the city of Memphis, man. Man, um, a pastor of an incredible church, Holy Impact and Promise, and radio personality at FM 104, AM 1240, WAV, and the trend, the hottest station here in the Mid South, man. Just, yes, sir. Man, coming in the game, man, doing something different, man, trying to make a change with, man, the influence that God has purposed me to have. You feel me? Most definitely, bro. Uh, you for sure different. Um, I When I first saw you on Facebook, uh, I just thought you was just this rapper. For sure. Didn't even know gospel rap. <laughs> I was listening to the music and I'm like, wait a minute, I can play this for the young homie. Yeah, so I, I was mean. like, okay, then I seen you, you hit me up by the photo shoot. You were like, um, I need some photos at my church. I'm like, dang, this bro, a pastor. So just your image up front, to me, that was important because certain conversations we started having after we met stuck to me mm -hmm. because I got a look, I got to, I got to know you personally about your background. Absolutely. And, uh, and I, and you were more relatable to me. Absolutely. So, um, I want to talk a little bit of, uh, more about that, about your style, Absolutely. um, as a pastor. Right. Um, so you have a, a album coming out for sure. All right, what's the name of the album that's coming out, and when is it dropping? The name of the album is called I'm Sorry. It comes out the first week in April. We haven't had a date yet. We actually still turning music in, but we're uh, anticipating the first week of April. It's called I'm Sorry. All right, where you get that title? Why, why the title I'm Sorry? Uh, the reason for the title is is me apologizing to myself. Man, whenever you gift it, and you in this thing of called artistry, and I just so happen to be a Christian rapper, um, I built my own platform um, that this, the world had never seen before. So it began to challenge theology, and I started to break myself down to make people feel comfortable with what they deem to be success or what they deem to be Christian music. Mm -hmm. And and I knew I was bigger than what I was doing, but I was making people comfortable that that had never seen it before. And I was just apologizing to myself. But not only that, it's me apologizing to my children apologizing to people connected to me that helped push this dream I got, you know, because I could have been bigger than what I am, but because I wanted to break myself down to make people comfortable. So I'm just, you know, at a new place in God, a new place in my gift. And I just want to show anybody that got this same zeal, the same ambition, the same vision, that you don't have to belittle yourself to make people comfortable. For sure, for sure. And I want to talk about that, man, for the young people and for myself. For sure. Um, Elaborate on that, breaking yourself down well, to be comfortable. Well, sometimes we do that because when uncomfortability breeds success. Okay. So sometimes when God has privileged you to do something that's different, when you're the only one that's moving at the capacity that you're moving in, sometimes you feel alone. Correct, so you want to go to what's the norm. I got a uh, um, an uh, eight-year-old niece that's in gymnastics class, she's doing exceptionally well. She can outflip all the eight-year-olds. Okay. So they moved her to the 12-year-old class. But even in the midst of her being in the class, she's always looking over there at the eight-year-olds. Yeah, for sure. Because her gift mm -hmm. is on another level, but her mind hasn't caught up yet. Because right. she want to stay over there with the people that's supposed to be leading. That's deep, and bro. And sometimes when you bless to have gift that we have it affords us to have forward forward momentum that we've never been used to right so even as the person that so it's amazing how people want what we have but they don't know what it takes to get it correct and don't even know that we're struggling to deal with it it just look good because it's something that we never seen we attracted to it so even as being the carrier of that gift sometimes Man, it takes for us to put, the Bible said, Joe 40 and 7, that you got to gird up your loins like a man. That's simply saying that you got to have thick skin. So whenever you're in leadership, whenever you're a leader, I don't care if you're in a gang. Whenever you, you're a leader, whatever you're doing, it requires you to be a leader. And sometimes you got to move your feelings out the way. Correct. 
So let me ask you this. Uh, you go by Trap Church, uh, Jesus Game, mm -hmm. Trap Gospel. For sure. You relating the trap to the gospel. Absolutely. Um, I think that's important. Absolutely. Uh, for many reasons, and we'll get back to that. But how do you deal with the scrutiny? Um, do you deal with any type of scrutiny? Well, absolutely. You know, uh, scrutiny don't come with it because, again, they used to be in church being a certain way. They used to yeah. it being superficial. And here's the crazy part. I love church. I'm a churchman. Uh, but fortunately and unfortunately, God has privileged me to go through a certain lifestyle. Uh, man, if it wasn't for me being in the streets, I wouldn't have the discipline and success that I have. Correct. So I'm privileged to have the opportunity to understand some certain pastors that never go. Some, some of them been in church all their life. They don't know what it's like to go to prison. They don't know what mm -hmm. it's like to live on SSI. They don't know what it's like to have food stamps. They don't know what it's like to sell drugs. But fortunately for me, I'm just painfully relevant enough to know what's still going out here. We can't save people if we can't identify with the problems that That's they're right. going through. So for me, trap is just another word uh, for hustle. Trap is another word uh, for grind. For me, you know, so I just want people to know that, man, you can still love God and have charisma and personality. Too many times we want to come to church and we feel like we're going to be clean overnight. But it's a process. When I quit smoking weed, I had to go from a gram, I mean, from an ounce to a quarter uh, to a three five. It didn't work like right. that. So, you know, I just want to be the person that's a bridge. Correct. You know yeah. And speaking of that bridge, that's a good gateway from uh, from like you to me personally, because I struggle with religion myself. Absolutely. Um, I've been scrutinized uh, due to certain beliefs that I have. Um, I once went to church. Absolutely. I've seen a lot of error in the church. Um, I remember one day I joined the church, and I don't want to say the name. I want to so bad, but I I'm not going to do it. But we went to a church here in Whitehaven. Um, I joined it because a friend of mine was was preaching there. And um, I had my son out there playing basketball at an event on the Saturday. Now, uh -huh. at this point, I'm giving church a try. Uh -huh. I struggled with religion. Didn't know many people grew up around religion. Mm -hmm. um, but my son was shooting a basketball. Pastor, pastor walked up to my son and said, man, you shooting that ball like a little sissy. Man, see, that right there, yeah. that, it, it ruined it for me, man. And this, was, this is coming from the head of that church. So what, what do you feel about that? Well, sometimes you get pastors that's... Um, detached from the world yeah so they don't they don't have an approach because they preach what you call fire and brimstone right so they become unrelatable so they don't know when they hurting each other hurting people feelings outside of the church they don't know when they're running people off uh because they just unrelatable right you know they they couldn't tell you what's going on you know but i feel that comes in when you have a lack of experience in the world yeah you know, because sometimes even those leaders have been forced certain stuff that ain't in the Bible, but they just live it because of morality. Right. And sometimes we allow morality to take over logic and spirituality. That's the real problem with the church now, because mm -hmm. we teach morality versus being spiritual. Right. So it's more religion. So man, everybody deserves grace. You know, correct. That's how I feel. Correct. And back to the trap, gospel trap, Jesus thing you got going. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important, too, because you touching souls of people who wouldn't even look towards the church. Fact. You see what I'm saying? Like, Fact. you can't put me inside of a church and a 90 year old man with some, with a big suit on. <laughs> you know, I, I got to be able to relate to what I'm seeing. I think we're visual people. Yeah. Everybody's a visual person. So Absolutely. seeing if, is believing. Correct. And so if a pastor walks up on the stage and, and, and he's in a wife beater with tattoos and gold teeth and chains, but he's speaking the gospel. He's talking about his past life in the trap, mm -hmm. his past life. I think that that's important um, to try to reach out to the youth. Um, because most of the times I hear a lot of people say who are involved in church that the church is only full of um, regular members and old people. Absolutely. So, well, to an extent, it depends what church. Correct. Because there's there's a church for because we haven't visited every church. Right. You know, unfortunately, I've been in a place where you are mentally where I went to one church and it just turned me off from all of them. Right. You know, but there there's somebody for everybody. You mm -hmm. know, and that's one thing we got to accept too. It's, it's good preachers, it's bad preachers. It's good pastors, it's bad pastors. And and even with him having gold teeth and all of that, it's still young people that mom and dad are preaching pastors that don't want to be at church too. 
Right. Believe it or not, my church is filled with preacher kids. Mm-hmm. Because they don't want to listen to their parents, right? And right. I give it to them in, in another way, right? You know, so I don't want to leave those people out in just the streets too, because there's people that grew up in church and we know right from wrong, but sometimes we've been taught wrong, right? So we have to relearn the religious system. You know what I mean, right? You know, I just think we have to be. The Bible says you have to be like Paul, so you become all things to all men. So real leaders know how to be approachable to everybody. Correct. You feel me? Correct. You got to be on an equal playing ground because you might like me, but it's somebody, um, i say this, I'm what you call ambidextrous, and I'm, I know how to be well polished. Mm-hmm. The wise man saying it's smart, you got to be smart enough to know something about a little bit of everything, but be smart enough to know what you don't know. Right. So that's basically saying being a great delegator in gifts. So you have to know when to turn it off and on. Or people not going to even receive you because I can't be ends to everybody in my church Correct. everybody can't receive it's all about receiving absolutely um, i think it's more important that i think it's most important that you receive the ones who don't have the knowledge absolutely um the ones who are lost absolutely um, I care more about them. Yeah, correct. I care more about them because a lot of and them. And not to discredit yeah, your yeah. other members. Absolutely. But more of them lost because of bad teaching. Mm-hmm. Or you know how you can read something and we read it at face value. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's really deeper than that. Correct. You know what I mean? Correct. So even with the Bible, certain scriptures I had been taught all my life, but it was taught to me wrong. Mm-hmm. So I had to go back and reread it. Even as a pastor, there's certain stuff in the Bible that I'm still relearning. And see, that's what I don't understand um, sometimes. Um, I take things literal for what. So one person will say, well, it's just a parable. Some people say, well, it's real. When Absolutely. you give one scripture to 10 pastors, you'll get 10 different stories. Absolutely. That doesn't work for me. Absolutely. Um, what you say, I'm going to hold you accountable for, Absolutely. and I need you to stand on it. Absolutely. So, um, for instance, I lost a son. Absolutely. Uh, back when I was 19. And the only thing people come to me telling me is, well, it, it was, you know, God called him home. It was his time. It was his time. He, he wasn't even here four days. Wow. You see what I'm saying? So those those types of things kind of irritated me and I couldn't yeah. connect to it. You could talk to some people and say those things and yeah. it helps those people. Yeah. So the teachings to me is, is um, it's just hard for me to grasp how people um, use it as a crutch. Yes, bro. Without explaining. Yes. And I think some people... Even some pastors will fix up their words uh, personally for themselves. Absolutely. And throw somebody else off who really needs. Well, absolutely, because a lot of pastors not evangelism and not evangelists. Mm-hmm. And that's you know, and that's my biggest my my biggest strength is, is getting the people that won't understand it. Mm-hmm. Because the only way you can gain understanding is if you really want it. Because sometimes we have stuff in our head and that's what we believe. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But in order to get knowledge, to be knowledgeable or something, you really got to seek that. So you're one of those people that you will have my attention 24-7. Correct. Because when you, <laughs> when you find out how real, and not saying you don't know God, but when you find out how real he is, mm-hmm. you will give him everything you got. Correct. Absolutely. And I, I believe in a higher power. Absolutely. Uh, I, I don't doubt that. Mm-hmm. But the religion is what got you like, I ain't yes. got all that. You yes, know, it's the so, religion. So man. I don't ble- I don't teach religion. I teach relationship. Right, right. And, and and another thing too, my pops taught me. You know, I see my dad get up and go get it. I never mm-hmm. seen my daddy pray for nothing. I never seen him ask nobody for nothing. I see him get up and go get it. And and I like to use this. Um, and I and, and see if you can help me with this. Uh, Absolutely. And so I like to use this analogy. Um, sometimes when talking to uh, younger pastors to try to get some insight. Uh-huh. Um, for instance, about the prayer thing. If I set a bottle of water. On this floor, um, between me and you right now, and you prayed for thirst, right? Mm-hmm. But I didn't, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you prayed to to have your thirst quenched, mm-hmm. and I don't pray for that. Mm-hmm. Me and you still have to do the same thing Absolutely. to get that bottle of water. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? So, in such a sense, to me, I, I just get to the work and just say the talking. Absolutely. Um, the thing about prayer to me that I wish the reason why I wish I could connect to it is. Use my wife, for example. Something happens with us. We have an issue. She prays about it. That, that kind of gives her a crutch to lean on. Yeah. See, me, I talk to my friends. I can't talk to my wife about everything. Absolutely. She's a woman, bro. I can't talk to my homeboys about everything. Most Absolutely. of them single. Absolutely. So when it's just me and I don't have an answer for myself, Absolutely. that's the problem. I have nothing. Yeah. So I do try to get into prayer mode. I try to practice prayer. I don't even know how to start by connecting. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes when I get on my knees, I'm probably like, 
dang man, I just I don't know. I feel I feel weak sometimes, man. Yeah. I feel like I'm adding more to my problem Absolutely. than just getting up and going to do the work. I I was in that place before when it's a it's a time in the Bible um, where a particular a person was asking God to speak to him and he didn't speak to him for forty years. Mm -hmm. What do you do when God you don't hear God's voice? Some of us to build our faith, God puts us in a in a desert or a dry place to see how you're gonna react. I went through that very thing, mm -hmm. you know, but sometimes, and here's the uncomfortable part that we don't like is people that walk in Christian or people that want to know God, mm -hmm. man. So sometimes we ask God for a sign when we decide, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. We be wanting answers right now. Mm -hmm. We want it right now, but sometimes they say everything you need is on the inside of you. The first thing the doctor do to babies when they're born and they go get their two month checkup is they put the vaccination inside of yeah. them. That's all the bad stuff you can do to build up your immune system. Mm -hmm. I got a 15 month old son. I can cook his food in the morning, avocado, sunny side up eggs. The first thing he do is throw his food on the ground. That's the only way he can eat it. <laughs> Watch this. That same vaccination, if we went and took it as adults, it'll kill us. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how God put all the bad stuff in us to make us better. Yeah. Watch this though, but he do it while we malnourish. Because if you were adult in your thinking, you're not gonna receive it the way you would if you didn't know. Uh that's for sure. Yeah, you, <laughs> that's yeah, real. I, I just said something. I hope yeah, you did. Yeah, no, no. Say it again, yeah, though. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's, when, when God is trying to do something for you, the only way you can receive the next level is if you're vulnerable. Okay. So as men, we don't yeah. like that because we got ego, we got yeah, pride. And true. then you got those of us like you and I, we're articulate, we're intellectual, uh -huh. we're visionaries, we gifted. Yeah. When we, our mind think, mm -hmm. I need an answer for this. And sometimes God says, I privilege you and I allotted you to have this. You got to move that out the way. Yeah. I preached a sermon um, um, the other day at church and it talked about a group of people that God gave gifts to. And then they started getting beside themselves. Uh -huh. And he showed up and he said, I'm going to take it from you then. Because now you think you can do it without me. Mm -hmm. You never want to put yourself in that place. But what I'm saying to you is sometimes, to get what you need from God, all you got to do is be vulnerable and listen. Okay. Sometimes he be speaking to you and you don't even know it. Again, I said, sometimes we want signs. Or he says, everything you need is already on inside. Right. So some of the stuff we deem to be detrimental is only here to be lily pads to our next level. Correct. Watch this. And I and I let you ask the next question. That was something I had to overcome. Uh, no, no, you you good. Yeah. We, we need this info. Watch this. It was a point in my life where I only would do something if somebody told me I couldn't do it. Okay. Do you know the same energy I put into proving them wrong, I, I could have did it from the jump. Yeah. That's it fair. was already, I'm simply saying that it was already on the inside of me. Right. The same ambition, the same zeal. I could have got up and did it. But because a Negro told me. It got active. Yeah, I, I can't do it. <laughs> That's true. Now I'm outside. It's been in there the whole time. That's what I'm telling you. I like the you. way you did that. That's what I'm telling you. See, I can relate to that. God already speaking to you. Right. The reason you asking him questions is because he's speaking. You just have to settle down and listen to him. Correct. And sometimes that's being away from people. We don't need people to talk to God. Mm -hmm. I'm married too as well. My wife a prayer warrior. But when my house is moving, the key is moving, I can't pray. I can't think. Yeah. So I have to wait till everybody settle down and I get by myself. Then I talk to God. Right. I ain't using no big vernacular to talk to God. Hey, my guy, I had a bad yeah. day today. See, see. You know, I need okay. you. I need you to show up now. I don't need you tomorrow. But the Bible says he's omnipresent. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. That means he's in your yesterdays, your tomorrows, and your forevermore. So he's simply saying, I never left you. Sure. And when you think I'm alone, I'm really covering you, and you're really stronger than what you think you are. Man, that's it. That's for sure. All right, let's talk about uh, your past for a little minute and how you ended up crossing over into the position you're in now as far as a pastor or a Christian man. All right. Well, honestly, I grew up in church, but I, you, I grew up in church, but not in Christ. Mm -hmm. They're simply saying, my mama took me to church. I went by force. Okay. But the crazy part, the conviction has always been there. So I always knew who God was, mm -hmm. but I didn't have a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. So it was almost to the point I was scared of God, but I didn't have a relationship to know who he was. Right. So I knew I believed in hell. I believed in all that, but I didn't have, I, 
I felt like, man, God, I ain't rocking with me like that. But right. I knew how to do church. Mm-hmm. Um, so I knew I was going to be a preacher in the back of my head my whole life. It was a fallback plan. Man, the rap don't work. I'm going to go preach. They like, they make mm-hmm. a lot of money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, you know, I you know, And God <laughs> didn't let it happen like that, man. I ended up facing a 52-year sentence. Uh, two and one popular. Okay. I met a young man by the name of Marcus okay. Richardson. Changed my life. He was my bunkie. Okay. He was in jail for taking his prescription paper off his pill bottle. That's a federal wow, offense. Wow, I did not know that. It's his pills, but he in jail for taking it off and he had it in his car. I've done that before to that's store that. stuff in it. Yeah. Change anything. A, not where he had pills in it, ah, but he took the paper off. Gotcha. That's a federal offense in Tennessee. So basically he in jail for nothing. Mm-hmm. He just didn't want his kids to know what the what the pills were. You mm-hmm. fine, bro. And um and um this man was my bunk and his mama was a pastor. Mm-hmm. And I was facing all this time. Every day he prays, <laughs> he reading scriptures and stuff like that. One day I came back from court for my preliminary hearing and he put scriptures on the bed and said, my mom want to talk to you. He got all the to- only talked to his mama on Wednesday, 15 minutes before Bible study. Mm-hmm. This is a pastor's son. Wow, man. And she, and I got on the phone with, I said, oh, you know your mama. She got on the phone and said, son, you're not going to do the time you think you're going to do. If you just turn, if you say yes to God, and she hung up in my face. Wow. And I was okay. like, man, when she hung up on me, bro, I mean, I ain't, bro, I'm finna go to jail. They caught me red handed, but they got circumstantial evidence, and I didn't know that. Okay. A couple of weeks went past. My lawyer, you know, those of you that have been to prison before, they give you an option. Hey, listen, they say you take this 15 right, right. now, you right. sign today, you gonna have to do 52. I'm like, man, I can't do 15. I'm finna try to box with them. And I went back. His, his, he called his mom and his mom said, I want to talk to you. She said again, she said, listen, son, I, if you say yes to God, your life will never be the same. And then this time I, I had been saying, God, I'm in prison. I'm about to throw my life away for a little bit of money. And she said, man, your life will never be the same. You said yes. I said, well, I don't know how to talk to God. She said, just talk to him. He hung up in my face. Mm. But this time I went back and I cussed him out. I'm like, bro, bro don't have me talk to your mama no more, bro. Yeah. I don't even know you, bro. I'm finna go to jail for 52 years. Jesus don't care nothing about me. Yeah. You don't care nothing about me. And uh, a couple of weeks went by again. We still downtown jailing and fighting, doing our time. And um, this day, and they said, if you don't sign by tomorrow, we finna take you to trial. Mm-hmm. And my lawyer said, you going to jail, brother. You finna get 30 to 52 years. And I said, bro, I need to talk to somebody. And he's like, man, my mama want to talk to you. The same lady that keep hung, hanging up in my face. And uh, um, Start no, 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 okay, no, no, okay. No. I'll be doing now. We good. Okay, uh, all right, my bad. So we can start back with the same woman. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. All right, yep. Tim, when you ready? You good? All right. So this same woman told me um, that, listen, if you say yes to God today, your life will never be the same. You ain't gonna do that time. You mm-hmm. coming home? So I said, man, how I do it? She said, start praying. I went back to my my uh, my shower and I cried like a baby. Mm-hmm. My first time crying as a grown adult. And I cried like a baby. Like, I got to do one of them empty cries. One of them just, you had I to just drain wailed. I wailed yeah. it to the point where the, the 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 CEO came in and thought something was wrong. And I came back. I was like, bro, man, how you in here reading scripture? He's like, bro, God got me. God got me. And, and then I felt the conviction. I said, bro, I need to talk to your mama. This is a Thursday. He said, I only call on Wednesday. I said, please call him. After you said you didn't need to talk After to her. I no didn't more. need to talk to her. And I called and talked to her. Uh, she said, I knew you would be calling me shortly. She said, your life has changed if you say yes. I said, I want to say yes. I don't know what to say. She said, your life are already getting ready to make a transition because you make the initial step. So she said, if you take one step, God will take the rest. Um, just a long story short, I started praying. I started a press circuit in 201 Poplar on the sixth floor. It went from six people to 63. The whole pod was in here praying with mm-hmm. me because everybody called me the preacher man. So everybody get quiet when it's time for prayer call. Man, I started preaching in prison. Long story short, I ended up not getting the time. I went to go do 90 days at the penal for, for some other minor stuff. I needed, I had a hole in Millington jail. I needed $5,000 to get out. Guess, guess who paid the bond? Who that? That strange. I never met. Come on, Later. man. I got out May the 15th on a Saturday. The next day I preached my first sermon in her church. There you go. So and that's how I started. I've been preaching this. That's right. Bought me a brand new Cadillac. That was my gift out of prison. A stranger I never knew. And I'm saying that all to say that 
Sometimes we asking God for a sign and God shows up in unorthodox manners. Mm -hmm. We expect him to do all this miraculous stuff through pastors and preachers. And sometimes God show up in your experience. So what do you do when God been there the whole time and you ain't acknowledged him? Sometimes God show up through your mess. Whenever gardeners build gardens, they use cow manure. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how God takes the stuff that we deem to be bad and use it for our good. So listen, man, so whenever God's trying to do something for you, it always come in a miraculous or unorthodox form. That means through your failures, through your problems, you can't hide it because it's somebody that's going to learn from your mistakes. See, that's where we mess up as leaders. We fail and we mess up and we fumble the bag or we fumble the ball and we think we're supposed to cover it up. Man, our job as leaders is the birth of the leaders. Mm -hmm. So the only way they become leaders is through our mess ups, our mishaps, our failures, and we grow up right before your eyes. That will birth maturity. So all the stuff that we think bad, like I just said, whenever farmers uh, build garden, they use cow manure. It's the same thing for you. We just got to embrace all our mess so we can use it as a message. Right. And I can relate to that message. For sure. For sure. I can super relate to that. So let me ask you this, man. So... <clears throat> Can people get this same message here in out of your music? Do you is your music more darker? Are, are you talking more about your past life? It's or? a it's um so the last album was called Trapaluya. So it yeah, so it was me, it was <laughs> me showing the street dudes how to do it and how I graduated from it. Uh -huh. And how I came to God and made God cool. So because a lot of folks think you Sometimes we only see success in one through one lens. Everybody has their own perspective on life. Uh, I've always been one of the men, even while in the streets, I've always been cultivated. I like golf. I like chess. I like eating at fancy restaurants. I like quail. I like elk. I like duck. So even while being a dope boy, I wanted other things. When I was a little boy, I used to tell my mama, mom, I want to talk white. And mm -hmm. I didn't realize all I was saying is, mom, I want to be well articulate. And she said, son, well, read then. Right. All you got to do is read. So listen, so she's simply saying, son, all you had to do was read. Your life was one of my favorite books by a man called Mike Bonham. And it's called uh, Leading from the Second Chair. You know what I mean? So it shows how important it is to be the number two person. And so many times we miss out on our next level because everybody want to be out front. Right. <laughs> and don't know what to do to be in front. You know, don't even know how to lead. Don't know how to lead. Mm -hmm. And leaders don't lead from the back of the line. Right. But majority of the people that's in leadership now need to be in behind the line leader. <laughs> for sure. For sure. <laughs> that's for sure. It's a lot of misleading going on. Absolutely. Man. Um, another thing um that I talk frequently to my boys about is uh to me, uh men aren't the same aren't the same anymore. Absolutely. It seems like we don't uh, real men are, are, are problem solvers. We find solutions. We 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 find solutions. We solve problems. We lead our families. Mm -hmm. um, but it it just seemed like the younger generation of men coming up, uh, they don't have that in their blood. Absolutely. Um, what, what? Even I know I know guys that was raised by their mothers now that are good fathers and good leaders. Mm -hmm. Masculine men. Yeah. Yeah. But I, what I would say is, is so many sectors to that because you got government. Right. You got society. You got people being superficial. Mm -hmm. So that's when I say superficial, that's what women deem what women should be. Right. That's your Instagram models. Mm -hmm. That's your Coke bottle shape. That's your success. Mm -hmm. You got the government that's taking men out of the house. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you got all these different working sectors. Then you got parenting. So how how were you raised? Right. You know what I mean? It's very seldom when you have men like you and I. That embraced society and taught ourselves how to be men, even when we had men in our life. Right. I had an incredible father. But there's certain things that I do as a father that he didn't do. It's funny you say that because that's part of what I'm doing with my personal documentary as I'm speaking on it. Yeah. Um, you know, I had a situation recently with uh one of my kids' mothers where I'm like, dang, you know, I, I'm I'm in this alone. Yeah. Ain't got nobody to talk to. Yeah. And, and I got a father. Yeah. But I, I don't think he can relate to this. Well, something uh, I would use to motivate you is, and and here we go. I want you to get this. Whenever God bursts something new, you never have nothing to look at. Mm -hmm. Who do you get advice from when you're the only one of your kind? 
Man. What do you do when you the leader that's supposed to raise up a new generation? Ain't nobody to look at. Right. You don't have nobody. You got to buck up. Yeah. And have thick skin because sometimes the people we look to for leadership, God only put them in your life for you to lead them. Right. You ever heard the saying that it's people that you've been an inspiration to, but at some point you're going to master what they taught you and you're going to become the inspiration. Mm. And that's, that's what's happening, bro. That's exactly what's that's happening. That's exactly what is happening. Because it's only far they can teach you when they're understanding on the go so far. Pay, all you have to do is have thick enough skin to pay attention and be respectful in your mm-hmm. attention pain. Mm-hmm. Because it's not our job to boo-boo on them because they supersede what we deem to be success. Mm-hmm. It's our job to thank them for how far they brought us. Right. It's our job as men to take what we learn from them and add it to what we're learning as men. Right. Because the world grows every day. Mm-hmm. My mama have a flip phone. She's 66 years old. Mm-hmm. She can't work a cell phone. Right. She got a flip phone. <laughs> she can't work my social media. She got better reception than I got on my Apple, though. She working. She, <laughs> when I call her, she don't get no signal problems. Come on, now. She don't answer no texts or none of that. <laughs> but my dad is a little older. He can work it. Everybody, um, a process is different, and you can't judge it. Right. But wisdom doesn't have apparatuses. Mm-hmm. We, wisdom don't have lunch and pads. Wisdom is, is experience. Right. So what do you do when you the lunch and pad for experience? Right. When you have to learn at your own expense. Can't blame nobody else. Right. But us. Mm. That's the part of, about men that we don't like. That other people, success is built on us. Yeah. As men, as women, their integrity, their character are built on our failures. Let me ask you a question. Um, <clears throat> do you believe that men are only loved if they have money? I think the superficial um, status of that makes that true. All women don't think that way. No. Because to me, that's like a slap in your mother's face. Yeah. When you say something like that. Yeah, yeah. How you, again, remember I just said, that's one of those points. They go back to how you was raised. Because fortunately for me, I got an incredible wife that don't think like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife helped me get on my feet. Now, I might be doing well now, mm-hmm. you know, but, you know, when she was with me, I ain't had nothing. You know, she taught me how to live in regular society again mm-hmm. and helped me work my way to this place I'm in now. You know, but all women don't think like that. I think the woman that lacks ambition and drive and only care about her looks think like that. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, if all you got is looks and you think like that. Yeah. But correct. if you but if you going to work every day, you got vision. Yeah. You know that here's some game I told my sister. I said, Babe, if all you chasing out there is a man with money, what y'all got together? Mm. So that means you automatically got to submit to what he say. Right. But if you help build it together, right, you going to be a queen forever. Right. You know, I had a guy tell me one day, I said, uh, my wife is my helpmate. He said, that's your slave then. He feels yeah, he like a man should carry it. Yeah, I think that's anger, bro. I think a lot of people. That's bitterness. Yeah, I mm-hmm. think a lot of people have been hurt to the point to where there, there's no way you could tell me People's mothers are teaching them yeah. these things because yeah. half these people's mother didn't have a six figure earner at no, home. No. A lot of these kids, a lot of these people have never experienced their father having any kind of real money. They have that idea of what, of what uh, I would use me. I can't talk about nobody else. My mom didn't make that kind of money. I had a social security mama, went to college. I still don't know how she ended up. Mm-hmm. us living check to check on social security mm-hmm. uh, but I had a hard working father that was successful even to this day um, but my mom didn't teach me how to love a woman Right? you know what I mean I had a failed marriage and then I married this incredible woman that I'm with now she taught me how to love a woman because she put me in a place of this word I keep using this whole interview vulnerability mm-hmm. she taught me how to move my pride and ego out the way so the only way you can get help is if you really want it Right. You got to be willing to receive it. So she taught me a new way of thinking. She was like, every woman don't want your money. Right. Some people just want you to be better. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because men, as men, we work hard just to get a superficial woman that don't want us. And we lose everything if we need our butt wiped 
She ain't gonna wipe. Nah, she ain't gonna be there for that. No, she gonna move on. Yeah. And I need a butt wiper. I yeah. need somebody that wasn't sitting in the rocking <laughs> chair with me. You know, so I want Chris Brown say I want a regular girl. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we can be superstars together. And sometimes it's all about man, me and mine too, because we want superficial women because of looks. You know what I mean? Right. So we work ourselves to death just to get a look for a momentary moment. Yeah, that's real, bro. We blame women when sometimes it's us. We waste a lot of time doing that. Absolutely, because we want this thing that don't exist. Right. And the only the half of us ain't lasting in bed that long. So you working, you going to work <laughs> and working hard to for you to go in the room with this girl for five minutes and she asks you for a Birkin purse. Mm, mm, mm. You just pay thirty thousand. Whether you say you're a trick or not, <laughs> right? You finna pay thirty something. You're going to buy her car, you're going to buy a house, you're going to keep her fed, you're going to do all of this for you to last five minutes every two days because she ain't going to give it to you. Because you got to give you something to miss because that's all she got. <laughs> hey, hey, but who am I? Well. <laughs> it's the truth, man. My uh, preacher said, man, the truth hurts. If it hurts, just say ouch. <laughs> hey, you the most authentic pastor or preacher I've ever talked to. Yeah, uh, man. In my life, bro. And, and I can appreciate. For sure. I can appreciate the realness, man. One of my things said, man, we real people facing real problems. I just want to introduce you to a real God. Yeah. That's true. Because he, he going to see under everything anyway. Well, he know it always. He, he know it anyway. Know. Right. He just let some of us bump our heads because we too smart for our own good. Right, right. I tell people all the time, we be having smart mouths and dumb brains. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we know how to respond. We know how to rebuttal. Yeah. But we don't how to move our pride out the way and let God think for us. Yeah. I think a lot of people just talk, man, to be talking. Yeah. Half the time I'm on social media scrolling. Yeah. I think a lot of people just talk. Well, to social be media has ruined so much of it. Yeah. You know, because social media has ruined a lot. Yeah. You got so, so many people that like talking. They will say the right thing, but don't mean it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's right. They got the answer. Some people will look up and say something super smart and didn't even know. Man. They didn't, they, they think, oh, damn, that was dope. You know man. what I'm saying? Like, well. I done seen that. I, done, I I could tell by the way people react, man. Word, like, I would say this. Everybody love language is different. So you got some people that like words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. You like some people uh, uh, that like touch, like to be filled on. Mm -hmm. And you got some folks that love social media. Yeah. That'll die without it because without it, they ain't nobody. Yeah. You know, but you got those kings like you and I that we don't need none of it. We can unplug it today. Yeah. And we still get respect out here. No, I, I like social media because um, just, like, just like I can blow this show up, you know, the right way with social media. It's it's, it's a click of a button instead of me getting in my car. Well, that's why I was just saying it's you business. Know, it, it, it is. Um, business. But the thing that gets me about it is, is how. Social media is misused. Yeah. I think the people who built social media knew what was going to happen when they put it out. Hey, here's the reality. Humans start getting smart. So yeah. the government had to figure out how to program us again. Yeah, yeah. So sure. social media got direct access to all our information. Yeah. It controls the algorithm. It knows your whereabouts. Yeah. All the time. It knows exactly what you like. Yeah. It knows how you think. You can start talking about certain stuff around your iPhone and all of a sudden it'll show up on your, your timeline. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I, and, you know, and, and for me to wake up one day and I, I saw this app, people uh -huh. was like, I'm on Facebook. I remember when it first came out. Uh -huh. The first thing popped up in my mind was, I'm finna get paid. Yeah. I'm finna get paid, bro. And, and the stuff I was seeing on there, I'm like, wait a minute. Is this what it's for? It was made for college students. People threatening each other, talking about killing each other on there. It, when it first came out, it was why It's so sensitive now. Yeah. But, um, you know, people pull a lot of... Pain and trauma out on, on to the app. Our trauma always for sale. It's, Absolutely. It's been for sale. Now, nah, that's good. Facts. That's yeah, facts. our trauma is for sale, bro. Trauma is turning to marketing dollars now. It is. Just like real radio. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same thing for people that, uh, uh, your breakfast clubs, your yeah. Hot 97s. Love and hip hop. Love and hip hop. And yeah. that's scripted, but they still. Yeah, I talked to a guy about that recently. Yeah, they yeah. still capitalize off our foolishness. That's true. Off that's our true. trauma. Yeah. yeah. But it's real, bro. Yeah, for sure. Man, listen, so um, I want to get into a one take video with you. For sure. You got one for the. For the people? Of course, man. We're going to turn up. No cap. Your boy, Ian, man. What's the name of the one take video? 
Man, 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 just stay tuned, man. We finna pop out, man. Just stay tuned. <laughs> Trapaluya out right now. Out digital platform. Go get it. Trapaluya. Out right now. We finna pop out. Straight Talk 901. Straight Talk 911 one time, man. We outside, man. Yeah. We'll